Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome to the golden finale for a golden wake. Alright, kind of just looks like I'm surrounded in urine. Never mind that. So let me draw myself off and pick up where I left off, which was with the beginning of chapter 4, the final chapter of a golden wake. Hence why I used the word finale at the beginning of this video. Another round for you, Bill? Sure, why not? Ever since they started letting us drink again, I just can't say no. So, has the old sad sack been in tonight? Not yet, but it's coming up on nine. He should be here any minute. In case you can't tell, they're talking about Alfie, who's gone from an optimistic, ah shucks, horse feathers kind of a guy to, well, a sad sack. I don't know if that's an improvement or not, though. You know, he may be a real son of a bitch, but I can't help but feel sorry for him. Ah uh, yes, once again, Alfie decides to do all of his character development off screen. Well, I don't. Plenty of people are hurting these days. A whole bunch are way worse off than him. I'll take those poor folks in the Dust Bowl, for example. Anyway, just because he used to be a real estate big shot doesn't give him the excuse to be disagreeable. Hey, he was also a mobster. Maybe I can get him going tonight and see if we can finally find out if he was really working for the mob. Well, speak of the devil. Good evening, Mr. Banks. What'll it be tonight? As you would expect, it really doesn't matter what Alfie's gonna drink. He's gonna do what he's gonna do, regardless of what liquor's in him. Rum. And don't skimp on me like you usually do. Yeah, it looks like the years haven't been kind to Mr. Alfie Banks at all. It looks like he could pass for 50 now, which begs the question, just how old was Alfie when he was down in Florida? I always thought he was in his late 20s, early 30s, but based on how rough he looks now, and the fact that it's only been 10 years since last we've seen him, yeah, he may have been a bit older. Well, I guess selling houses and optimism really keeps you looking young. Thanks, buddy. Have I got horns coming out of my forehead or something? Wow, Alfie is really abrasive now. Again, I do wonder what he did in that ten-year gap. Apparently a lot of rough living. No, sir. Then why are you staring at me like I do? You used to work in real estate, didn't you? To be honest with you, this conversation right here feels like it's just supposed to refresh you on the journey that Alfie's been on. Your choices, just like in real life, ultimately don't matter because everything's predetermined. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. If I were you, I'd stop asking those sorts of questions before things get unpleasant. Oh, is that a threat? This is exciting. Are you threatening me? Yeah, this guy's really weird. He seems to get his rocks off on threats. Maybe he's some sort of masochist trying to pick up dudes in a bar. I'm doing more than just threatening. <laughs> Damn, Alfie, where the hell did that come from? You must have changed over this past decade. I mean, you ain't taking no disrespect from anyone anymore. You've become a bit of a badass, haven't you, Alfie? Or not. Looks like he's got a bit of a glass jaw. So yeah, Alfie wakes up in the gutter where he probably lives now and discovers an old poster for, guess what, Coral Gables. And, well, then he decides this. Huh. The days when I was an upstart kid who was going to make something of himself and restore the family name. Look where that got me. Uh, well, Alfie, you were doing pretty well back then. You should have been making a lot of money, and I hope you saved... Oh, yeah, the depression thing. But yeah, either way, you kind of only have yourself to blame for how things turned out. You get all weird about not becoming mayor, and then you decide to join the mob, and, and it kind of just seems like your life's tail spinned out of control since then. Yeah, I guess the moral of the story is don't get so worked up when your surrogate father doesn't make you mayor. Ah, forget it. Life's too short to hold grudges. After all, if it hadn't been for Merrick, I'd probably be panhandling in Bryant Park right now. I might as well go see how the old bird is doing these days. Can't possibly be worse off than me. Yeah, it's not really clear what Alfie's finances are looking like nowadays, but apparently he has enough money to go down the East Coast and back to Florida. And he also seems to have gotten over the whole Merrick thing pretty damn quickly right there. I guess he should have looked at the poster earlier on. This place hasn't changed one bit. At least something from the old days is still around. God damn, Alfie, it's only been 10 years. Now, I know 10 years is a long time, but it's not that long of a time. 
So anyway, Alfie goes into the house and finds out that Mrs. Merrick and Mama Merrick are alive and well. But Merrick himself, he's not there. No, he's at some fishing club he established after things went belly up at Coral Gables. And, well... That doesn't sound too sinister until you realize, just like in Chapter 3, the one that changed Alfie's life forever, there's a hurricane coming. And this one's supposed to be stronger than the one that hit previously that caused Alfie to join the mob. So either way, Alfie has got to go save Merrick. Because, well, Alfie's trying to redeem himself now. Begging your pardon, sir. What can I do for you? Hey, it's that guard who Alfie fooled with his brother back in the day. Why? He looks like he's aged really well. Almost makes you wonder. For our dear friend Alfie here, you been doing some hard drugs? Yes, I have actually. Well, okay, Alfie. Anyway, Alfie needs to get on this train because it's the last train that's departing. And conveniently enough, the train's going by where Merrick's at. So huzzah to that. But unfortunately, this dude won't let him on the train because, you know, the whole hurricane thing. But nevertheless, Alfie can persuade him to let him on because, well, you know, you have to progress in the game somehow. Fine. I don't know why I'm doing this, but go ahead and get on. But if anyone asks, you don't tell them I let you on board. Deal. Hours later, dramatic music starts playing. Ah, can't see a thing. We should be well on our way. Now I just need to find a way out of this car. And Alfie wanders around the dark until, well, he finds an open barrel of kerosene. Good lord. Just open like that on a fast-moving train during a hurricane. Now that don't seem dangerous at all. But hey, Alfie's got light now. And you can see a door to go into the next car. Because you know, it would have been impossible just trying to feel around for it. The storm seems to have made landfall already. Horse feathers! Sticking around back here probably isn't the best idea. I should head towards the front of the train. But not before Alfie steals a hammer. Because kleptomania exists, hurricane or not. What? Who are you? What are you doing on this train? I mean, not to nitpick or anything, but the dude's looking right at Alfie, but his head's at an angle in his little, I guess, avatar. I'm just saying I'm here to nitpick, because it's kind of a short chapter. The name's Banks. I snuck on board because I need to get to the keys. You're crazy. What were you thinking? That he's gonna make up for the whole mob thing to Merrick? You're lucky you came up here when you did. I was just about to detach the locomotive. But why? Because if even one car gets blown off the tracks, the rest of the train will too. It's not worth- Damn it! I was afraid this would happen. If we don't equalize the pressure in this car, in the next few minutes it'll come apart. You know how the old saying goes, when God blows open a window, you throw a hammer through another one. Good going, thanks. Now let's get to the locomotive so we can detach the train. Otherwise, we'll be swept off the tracks along with the rest of it. Whoa, Alfie, where the hell did you come from? Shouldn't you be closer to the... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm nitpicking. I'll stop it. The wind seemed to have died down slightly. We must be entering the eye of the storm. Or maybe not. I'd better find George. There isn't much time. Well, fortunately for Alfie, the fishing club is built really close to the train tracks. Actually, how the hell does Alfie know where to even go? Or what he's even looking for? It's not like he's ever been here before. And it's not like this place has a sign that says George Merrick's Discount Fishing Club or whatever it's called. Alfie Banks? I have to admit, you were the last person I expected to see walking through that door. What brings you to my little club? It looks more like your living room, Merrick. You really have fallen in hard times, haven't you? I came to get you, George. In case you weren't aware, there's a huge hurricane on its way. I am well aware, yes. In fact, I sent Eunice away because of it. I know. She's the one who told me where I could find you. I see. I have to confess, I don't fully understand why you've come. But as long as you're here, go ahead and have a seat. I haven't got time to talk. We have to leave. Yeah, Merrick's too damn stubborn to go anywhere, so Alfie gotta chat him up for a bit. George. Yes? Yay! Now we gotta develop Alfie's character. We can decide whether he apologizes for being a jerk or just stands his ground and stays a jerk, I guess. I chose that he stays a jerk because he is kind of a jerk now. George, I know we didn't see eye to eye last time we spoke, and things haven't changed. I still respect you. 
but I also stand by what I said. I, I don't even remember what Alfie told him. I just remember that he announced to Merrick that he worked for the mob now. It was actually really funny and stupid. So Alfie and Merrick do a little bit of male bonding while a hurricane rages right outside of their house. So, what have you been doing with yourself the past few years? Well, I'm sure you heard about the bust. Coral Gables went bankrupt and I was forced to step down from the commission. I always enjoyed it down here in the Keys and Eunice's family just happened to own this property. So we came down here and opened up the fishing club. It's been a much quieter life than I'm used to, but I can't complain. I suppose I had my time to shine. Couldn't the others have done something for you? What about Doc? I assume you didn't hear that Doc passed away five years ago. No, I didn't. Huh. Hmm. I guess it's a good enough response for what I suppose is kind of like Alfie's art rival or was. I don't know. He was mayor and Alfie was mad about it. And now I guess Alfie's over it. So anyway, old Alfie boy is going to talk to Merrick for a while until eventually he can attempt to persuade him to leave. So Alfie, why is it so important we go back? Well, they're a hurricane, and, well, you could die. There, I tried. Coral Gables needs you back, George. It's just not the same without you. Alfie, what the hell do you know about Coral Gables? You've been away for ten years. Oh, I hardly think that's true. Coral Gables has been fine without me the past few years. We had our moment in the sun. It's time for a new generation to take over. There's still so much left to do in Coral Gables. You can't just give up now. Oh, really? This is an interesting change of attitude. Didn't you give up on Coral Gables when you decided to work for Tom Walsh? Oh, damn, Alfie. You really lost your edge. I saw the way things were headed and decided to go for a more lucrative opportunity. No, Alfie. Be honest with yourself. You were mad that you were not chosen to be mayor. And hell, you ain't even taking this opportunity to ask Merrick about it. You know, bring up the whole thing like, why? Why, surrogate father? Why did you not make me mayor? For which I can hardly blame you, but I just wish you hadn't jumped ship so soon. What else was I supposed to do? Drown with the rats? I don't share your optimism, George. God damn, this is revisionist history. I played this game. Alfie did not even think about the whole depression thing. Oh, sure, that happened later. But oh, no, no, no. Alfie was long gone by the time the depression newspaper was in our hands. Tom Walsh was already dead by then. I still can't understand how you never felt tempted to just give up yourself. Who says I didn't? Do you think you're the only one who saw what was going on? The depression came to Coral Gables years before the rest of the country. There were days when I thought about packing it all in. I knew when the bubble had burst, but I worked too hard to just give everything up. I stayed until they threw me out. I mean, that sounds noble, but at the same time, it also sounds like, what else are you going to do? I... I didn't know that. I thought you were just naive. We all have our bad days, Alfie. Sometimes it's bad weeks, or even months. But what's important above all else is sticking to your principles. Oh, come on. That's some fortune cookie philosophy right there, if I've ever heard it. You can't be introspective at all, Merrick. Oh, always stick to your principles. Never change anything about yourself, because that's good. I understand what you're saying, George, but times have changed. Principles are important, surely, but the depression and lack of money is all anyone thinks about. You made the city beautiful, sparing no expense, making it all about the aesthetics. But think about the value of that city and the current economic climate. Someone in charge wouldn't think twice about tearing down the Biltmore to sell the land if it meant a profit. And all the work we did, all the sacrifices people made, will have meant nothing. I hadn't even considered that possibility. I can't in good conscience allow something like that to happen. Well, that's all well and good, but what's Merrick going to do exactly? I mean, what, what can he do? I mean, if someone wants to sell the Biltmore for the land, uh, how, how the hell he going to stop it? He's not involved with the project anymore. All right, Alfie. As soon as this storm passes, we'll take the first train back to Miami so I can assess the situation myself. Thank you for helping me see things a bit more clearly. I think I'm the one who should be thanking you for that, George. Yeah, I think that sums it up pretty well right there. Let's get a move on. We should be careful. It sounds like the storm has gotten stronger. George, this building is coming apart. We haven't got any time to lose. We need to get someplace safer. Oh yeah, don't hurry or anything. It's not like there's a bunch of cracks on the ceiling or anything like that. Yeah, just take your sweet time. Just follow me and we'll be there in no time. Right behind you. George, watch out! The ceiling is collapsing! Yeah, you can just kind of make Alfie wait here for a while. A 
Oh, damn, Alfie dead. They killed Alfie. They dropped a roof on him. But then again, they dropped a bridge on Captain Kirk, so it's just not that terrible of a way to go. But seriously, Alfie would have been fine if he didn't rubber band back. Boy should have learned how to push someone properly. I guess all that posh living, he just, he just never learned how to push a man right. <laughs> I'm tearing up now. Ladies and gentlemen, today we remember a very special man whose life was unfortunately cut short. As has Merrick's suit budget. I mean, come on, man. That's the same suit you were wearing when the man died. Has some class. Alfie Banks was someone who wasn't afraid to speak his mind. In fact, he certainly gave me a piece of it one of the last times I spoke with him. And had you not been such a stubborn jerk, he would still be with us today, Merrick. However... At heart, he was a kind soul. Alfie cared about the well-being of others, even if they wronged him. And that takes class. Really? He did? Now, I know you're supposed to say nice things at a funeral, but I don't really recall Alfie ever forgiving anyone that, well, wronged him. I mean, he kind of tried to save Merrick's life at the very end, but uh, that was about it. He never apologized to his brother, at least not on camera. And yeah, he kind of wrote dammers out of his life when he became mayor. Man didn't even know he died. Actually, you know, the more I think about it, he really didn't care for the well-beings of others at all. I mean... That one dude earlier on the game, he forced him to sell his house because Merrick wanted to land. Yeah, the more and more I think about it, the more and more it seems like Alfie wasn't particularly a great dude. He just did a lot of stuff for Merrick, so I guess, you know, from Merrick's perspective, he was a really kind dude who, well, at least took care of him. In the time I knew and worked with him, Alfie always showed an immense amount of initiative, which makes it no surprise that he achieved as much as he did. Well, there's initiative, and then there's just doing whatever you tell him to do and finding creative ways to solve your problems, so... Despite harder times in his last few years, he showed in the end that he was a good man. I would not be here speaking to you right now if it weren't for him. Not only do I owe my life to him, but my livelihood as well. Though I may not have expressed it as clearly as I should have, Alfie was instrumental in the success of Coral Gables. I'm sure he knew that. Yeah, right, I'm sure he was. I don't see no Wikipedia page for Alfie Banks. And though he was taken from us far too soon, Alfie's legacy will live on in the streets and buildings of this city. But none of them will be named after him and he doesn't get a memorial. Because just like the galleon which came to be the symbol of Coral Gables, Alfie sailed through all our lives, leaving behind a golden wake. Yeah, yeah. Name dropped game's title, then fade the black, and then, oh wait, we have an Animal House style ending that kind of covers what happened with some of the main characters, who were, you know, real people. So this really happened to real people. I think I've said it a few times across this series, haven't I? So old Doc Dammers was only mayor for one year. Had Alfie been patient and waited a year, maybe he could have become mayor. But yeah, no, he had to be all impetuous and join the mob again, Alfie. I know you dead, but come on. That was some really bad judgment on your part. So apparently Fatty a ghost now, because, you know, hey, what else he going to do? He dead? At least he's got work. So the statue of this lady now. That cool? Merrick's mama. He's immortalized in bronze, but Alfie can't get Jack. You know, William Jennings Bryan wasn't really in the game very much, and he wasn't a big figure, but here's some trivia in case you ever, I don't know, go to pub quiz night or whatever kids do these days. I, I, what? I don't got much to say about her. She's cool that matters at all. Yeah, I, I've just run out of things to say about these people. They were all fine characters who I've met a couple times while playing as Alfie, so yeah.
feels like something they pulled right out of a little tourist brochure. But hey, whatever. The game's over, the credits are rolling, and I can throw my two cents in here for what it's worth. I actually like Golden Wake a lot. It's a really interesting little game. There's not too many games that are about, well, selling real estate in the 1920s in Miami, Florida. It's a fascinating premise, and for the most part, it's executed well enough, I suppose. I mean, it looks nice, the puzzles make sense within the context of the world we're existing in, but at the same time, there's one real glaring flaw that I would say that A Golden Wake has, and that's that for a game that's really about character development, in particular, Alfie's character development, it seems like they're just is enough development. Now let me see if I can clear up my statements a little bit here. It just seems to me that Alfie's a pretty interesting guy living a pretty interesting life. And it's really unfortunate we don't see much of it. It seems like we just get the little cliff note version of this game. Not the full fleshed out release where we get to really experience the decade experience that Alfie had down in Florida. It just seems like Alfie moves there then all of a sudden he's a big with America and then oh shit he joins the mob and then oh yeah now he's down on his luck. There's big gaps of Alfie's life that we don't get to experience that I really wish we could have because Alfie again is a pretty interesting dude for all the horse feathering he does but yeah that's probably the biggest fault that I can find with a golden wake it's that there isn't enough of it and I suppose that if you're making a game that's a good problem to have but yeah I digress a golden wake is still one of my favorite games that came out last year and mainly because of its premise and because it had you know character development it's just a shame there wasn't enough of it so, folks, that does it. I've been some guy. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, bye-bye.